Power, two power, four wits, three guts. Yeah, fuck it, yes. I uh, the three dice of dark arts. Ah! Coming to you from Nidvalia, it's nothing ventured, nothing game. Your host with the most, your GM Jared. And tonight, I'm joined by Steve. Yep. And... Continuing on our dive into Viking Death Squad by Modifius and created by Runehammer Games, we're going to do character creation. The important part of the game, because without character creation, you're just playing with yourself. Your mom said, don't do that. Stop it. No. So stick around as we dive into character creation. So Viking Death Squad has character creation and it's really choosing between one of two options. You could choose to be a human or an immortal. Tonight, we're going to make a human. So I personally like the immortals. Steve's likes the humans. Steve is making the character. So Steve is making a human. Now, I, I want to I say that I actually like the immortals too. But I also understand that most people want to play an immortal. And something I didn't go over in the other video is that there is a limiter mechanic for immortals. Since they are more powerful and they are resistant to dying, is that the lore of the game dictates that there are only so many immortals left. And without the immortals, the humans stand no chance. So if 10 immortals die, meaning throughout the game, you, you've used your three lives and you decided to come back as another character and you pick another immortal, once that 10th immortal dies, the humans lose and the campaign is just over. Yes. There's an auto death mechanic, an auto end game mechanic, um, which I, I think is pretty dope. Uh, it's a really interesting system, but yeah. So I like the immortals. Uh, the immortals are fairly rugged uh, in terms of a character while the humans are much more adaptable. Let's just put it that way. Um, Steve brought up a good point, and that point was the humans get more skills and have more a wider array of skills than the immortals. And Steve really wanted to shine a light on the skills because the skill system in this is very simple. The DM actually doesn't call for skill checks. Many of the skills are uh, triggered by using your own abilities. So if you're a gunslinger and you shoot your gun and you have the gunslinger, gunslinger skill, it triggers right away. And then you want to use that ability. So like on a, a four or five or six, you get to add more attacks on either different enemies or on your single target. So when you roll a four or five or six on your on your uh, ranged gun attack, you can trigger that ability. So the GM doesn't even call for it. It just happens naturally. So yeah, skills or, are really interesting. Yeah, or when you're using, say, the dark arts skill, if you're using runes and runic magic, every time you use mm -hmm. a rune, you roll your dark arts skill. If you happen to roll a specific number, which I believe is a six, your spell yes. does not consume a use out of that spell. Yeah. So uh, it... it skills actually require the player to know what they are so if you're if you're a player and you're not the gm i like this because most of the time as a gm uh you're always kind of like okay use that skill okay use that skill this i i get to take a sit i i sit back i'm like all right well he didn't say he was going to use his gunslinger skill so i'm assuming he doesn't want to use it or she didn't use her rune magic so i'm assuming she doesn't want to use it you know and I'm just like, well, the Borg are going to use their abilities. <laughs> uh, so, you know, obviously not not trying to to be a jerk about it. But if you're if you're playing as a, as this, uh, my advice is ha either have your own PDF uh, or book, or at politely ask the, your GM if you can maybe like take pictures of the skill or or print out those skills so you have them next next to you maybe grab like an index card and jot them down so you have them sitting there uh so you know oh okay i did this i'm gonna use that oh okay i got this i can use that um but let's jump into it so first step steve chose human uh 
now you roll your dice everyone starts with a one d6 in all your abilities right yes all six of your so, abilities so the cool yeah, thing about so, these we're actually gonna, i'm actually going to put somewhere on this screen i'm going to put an image of the yes yeah, so we're here i'm going to put an yeah. image of the character sheet the character sheet makes it very easy and very clear of what you get based on what you pick so on the upper right hand corner obviously you have your name your role all your stuff right on the upper right hand corner it says type are you a human or an immortal if you pick human it says you add one dice to your aim and one dice to your speed which is what you get for being human if you're immortal you pick one dice to your power and you add one dice to your guts it tells you what you get automatically and it also tells you during the skill section the differences between the skills between humans and immortals so it makes it very clear to figure out what you get for what you're picking you just got to write in all the what skills you're picking and all the stuff you get obviously you want to do this in pen because you're never going to die you 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 just won't you're just that great mistakes for uh, the week <laughs> i'm i'm being facetious uh <laughs> so you have your your six skills power aim speed wits guts and resolve uh quick rundown of what they are power is roll the hit with a fist or melee weapon lift it's just all your physical attributes all enrolled into one aim ranged weapons uh thrown weapons and operate ship weaponry so if you're on a ship <laughs> and and you got you got you got you know your your luke skywalker hopping into uh you know help han shoot those tie fighters that's your aim uh speed speed's important it is your initiative as well as how hard it is for someone to hit you uh super important so that's that's an important one which this is uh discerning information figuring out clues uh locating secrets out thinking foes uh it's just it's it's super versatile it is like the the catch-all skill kind of um guts resist poison um you know eat a rat not throw up um you know resist fear being scared uh resist uh the elements so like it's cold out uh, i'm not i don't i don't worry about the cold uh and and resolve this is important so resolve is a special stat uh it's a magic it's a it's a separate pool of dice um and when you uh you can use this to kind of boost your abilities right so to, to 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 add more to those abilities um every time you rest uh, for an hour or more, the resolve pool refills. So it's kind of like put, uh, argued that like you might want to use this a lot. Um, I wonder if you, well, I was just gonna say I would I would just put all my points into resolve, and just constantly buff myself, and then be like, guys, I need a nap. I need a nap, guys. <laughs> yeah, well, that that comes with limitations because you only have so many resolve dice. So if yeah, you're in the middle of combat, you run out of resolve dice. Every one of your other stats is gonna be one or two because. I, you get bonuses. For I'm years. running to take a nap. <laughs> um, Mortals don't run. Yeah. Well, um, uh, we're playing a human here, Steve, <laughs> not an immortal. Uh, so those are the those are your 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 stats, right? Super simple. Again, this is a very rules like system. Um, very fast. It, it wants you to build a character and get into the mayhem. So, Steve. Uh, I have my dice in my hand. How many dice do I get to to uh, set around? So where, you where start off with dice? one in every stat. So you, you yep. have one die in every stat. Uh, as a human, I get plus one to aim and speed. So I have two dice in aim and two dice in speed. And now I can assign four more dice to any one of these stats. So there's no rolling mm -hmm. involved. I could just say, okay, well, I want to put four dice in power. I want to put uh, one in aim because I'm already pretty good at that. I want to put a definitely speed because I'm a human. So, you know, I can't wear some of that heavy, awesome armor that the immortals get. So I might want to up my speed so I avoid getting hit completely. And resolve is always a good skill to put a couple of points in because it is just like, man, that one thing that I'm trying to hit, or that one thing I'm trying to do is a little bit more difficult than I'm capable of. Resolve this lets me steal myself and and try to get that get that done so i i would say that in this character i'm gonna probably do a dumb thing and ignore power and guts and just stick with the one die i got 
Uh, probably put two dice in resolve just to give myself three in that, just because you know I think resolve is a, a good choice. Give myself one point in speed and one point in aim. So give me three dice in aim, three dice in speed, three dice in resolve, and one in everything else. Give me a little, a little bit of a. Uh, I'm a slightly better than average, but mm -hmm. yet again, I also have three have three skills. You know, wits. I ain't talking to anybody. I ain't finding them any information. Uh, guts. I better not get poisoned or have someone uh, uh, try to scare me. And power. I'm not in melee. I'm just gonna. Hang back and uh, let my guns do the talking. Awesome. Uh, with that said, now you get to choose one special skill. Uh, as a human, that's cunning learner or go unnoticed. Uh, cunning learner, if a skill is used in your view, roll your wits against a GM target on your turn to acquire one die of that skill instantly. So... So if uh, if if let's say uh, I use uh, gunslinger, right? Um, I can then instantly learn gunslinger, and I get a die in it. Yeah. Uh, so it's a contestant cool. die roll between you and the GM. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So if I had a decent wits or a high wits, that might be something useful. But right now, I only have wits of one, so I'm probably not going to get much use out of that skill. And I do have a relatively decent speed. Uh, yeah. So going unnoticed is use your speed and roll on your turn. Um, so at the beginning of combat, you roll speed. Any four, fives, and sixes, I uh, am able to avoid detection for 1d4 rounds. So given the fact that I'm a human, I'm a little bit more fragile than some of the immortals, that might be uh, the better way to go. So I'm going to take down special skill as go unnoticed. Now... What kind of role are you going to choose? And roles are, are what? How can I describe roles? Roles give you a um, a view of how your character would be played, right? So if I'm a hijacker, uh, my character is humans who find ways aboard uh, relic ships, um, you know and and different ships and then they hijack them they are master of improvising uh threading the needle scaring the guts out of ally of any allies crazy enough to ride shotgun with the human hijacker uh and then this gives me a bonus skill of pilot plus two two d6s uh so what's your role uh you have eight roles as a human you have hijacker grave robber ex uh exorcist assassin smuggler Jet biker, junker, or excavator. Uh, what role do you see yourself being? So, I was actually looking at uh, hijacker because there are vehicles in the game. Hijacker might actually yes. be quite interesting to be able to pilot a vehicle of some sort, which also means piloting ships as well, because there is lore for going out into space, and some of the bad guy ships and some of the Borg uh, ships that are out there are actually still hovering in space, and you some of the some of the adventures may bring you out into space and you have to fly some sort of uh craft of some sort also you know assassin it's always good to you know get the the sharp shot skill with two dice um yeah i think i'm just gonna go hijack because i think it's a cool the cool concept all right so steve gets to add two dice to their bonus skill of pilot so and then uh the reason why i said that is now we're going to kind of move backwards and i i like doing this a little backwards right this isn't exactly how the book lays it out um you you would have instead gotten six d6s to split among three skills mm -hmm. but the way i look at it is maybe if you know your roles you might want to like add like you already got pilot in there so you might want to like Stack pilot because if you're leaning heavily into that, right? So that could be one of the skills you add your 66s to. Yeah. Um, you know, and there are a number of skills. Actually, I haven't counted the skills, but there's, there's a, a lot a, a of large skills. Number. There's a lot of skills, yeah. Uh so what three skills are you probably gonna pop into? So you keep in mind and, you have it's a choice of up to one to three skills. You don't have to pick yeah. actually three skills. You can pick less skills and put more dice in those skills to become mm -hmm. very proficient in them. But 
in in general i think i am going to go for more average approach um considering the fact that my stats are pretty good so so what what skills are you going to choose you already said you're kind of like going to lay yourself out a little bit more because you you said you know you, you you're not you're kind of like a, a jack of all trades but a master of none uh yeah. so so what what skills were you looking at there steve so obviously i get uh, two dice for pilot from my mm -hmm. my uh role and then I decided to pick up mechanics. So what mechanics does is I am allowed to make a uh, a dice check, and on any four, five, or sixes, I'm allowed to to identify weird technology. So I figured since I'm going to be piloting stuff, it's entirely possible that I'm going to be piloting stuff that I've never seen before, and it lets me uh, possibly give a check. Now on the mechanics check, it's a four, five, or six is a success. So. I'm going to take a chance and only take one dice in this because I do want to pick three skills. I don't want to have one that's really good. Mm -hmm. The second skill I picked, because I have a high speed, is Scout. So the second skill I picked up is Scout. Now, Scout mm -hmm. has a mechanic of... There's a mechanic of being surprised. Now, it's possible that the players surprise the monsters or the bad guys, and that's good for the players. And then sometimes the GM successfully surprises the players. So that's generally bad. So anytime Very the GM bad. successfully surprises the players, I roll my scout skill. And I have two dice in that skill. And any sixes I roll, the GM speed is reduced by one dice. So I want to have a couple of dice to have a chance to roll a six. Not the not the greatest, but I still think that slowing the GM down and letting my speed kind of take over is always a, a good option to give me priority in, in a fight. Mm -hmm. And the third skill, because I am concerned about taking damage, is I'm going to take Fearless. Every time I take a hit, I roll my Fearless uh, skill, which I put three dice in. And on a four, five, or six, I recover one dice of Resolve. And I only fail uh, in... So if I say I'm Feared, I only fail... Uh, rolls involving fear by rolling six or more under the goal so normally say if the goal was 12 and i rolled an 11 normally i would fail that check and r run away or take the fear this skill lets it only have to fail by six or more to be frightened so it lets me stay in the fight a little longer and also gain back those really important resolve dice which i do have three of them so i might be more freely using my resolve dice to kind of boost those skills that i didn't put too many points into to be able to get them back every time i take a swing if someone takes a swing at me uh, very solid skills. Um, I I I saw feel uh, fearless, and I was like, yeah, that's that's a solid one to take, especially as a human. You're a little yeah. squishier than everyone else. Um, solid skill. I'm surprised you didn't uh, dump everything into pilot, but you're you're a forward thinking person, um, and that's unlike myself, who is very like, I'm an immortal. I'm just gonna bash my head into it until it stops <laughs> so, I mean, uh, there's there's multiple different ways to build a new character because even if you are a human remember you have six dice to determine between one and three skills so you could just choose to pick two skills and have three dice in them or like two dice in one and four in another you're really good at that one skill or you can spread yourself out a little bit more which means you're not going to be as successful in each skill but you have more skills to play with so just determine the play style you want. So just because you're human doesn't mean you have to know every skill. You can go and yet again, you can even take the the other special trait and go heavy into wits and just get free skills. Yeah. So yeah, many different ways to play either an immortal or a human. Mm -hmm. And now we come to the really fun part and that is the human background. Uh, the background, there are three simple steps to creating a background. So first, you must take the oath. Now there are a number of oaths here, and what a oath is is our like your reason for everything. Um, are you going to come up with your own, or would you like to roll on this oath chart right here? Well, I mean, if you want me to roll, I can roll. I was just gonna say because I'm a pilot. I mean, I would definitely want to just steal a war pig ship. Ah, uh, that makes sense to me. Uh, pretty solid uh next up is in your long journey of being someone who steals uh ships uh <laughs> you owe a debt uh this is something that will come up in game probably so what is your debt are you gonna roll on thing or 
Oh, I, I don't have any dice in, in in arm's reach, so I'm just gonna pick. Uh, so you know, hey, so you know, yeah. I'm a pilot, so I'm gonna know a couple of engineer buddies of mine. One of my engineers who helped me escape the war pigs uh, in my past has been tossed in the gulag and is contacting me for help. That's a good one. Uh, stop sending that call to voicemail, Steve. That's <laughs> rude. And last but certainly not least, uh, this is your code. The code is the thing you will never break or bend, no matter how dire the circumstance or how much it will uh, benefit you. So what code will you take? Uh, in, in this type, um, you know, I figured that being uh, an experienced pilot and knowing a bunch of engineers, I'd probably be heavily working with the resistance. So I would never reveal secrets of the rebellion, even under torture. Oh, and that's man. where my fearless Dang. comes in. Yeah, they're, they're going to totally uh, give you paper cuts and then put your hands in orange juice. That's pretty <laughs> terrible torture. Uh, so with that, normally, um, you know, we're just going to kind of skip it. But when you are making your character, the humans do receive four basic gear. Uh, there is a, a list of gear where you could roll a D20 or it says like if there's something specific you want, please talk to your GM about it. So again, it's up to how you want to do it. Do you want the, the dice to, to tell oh, you your fate? Yeah, I would probably just roll 4d20 and see what, what came out. And the same thing with yeah. the armor. Um, you get two armor pieces as a human. I would just roll randomly on the armor chart. Uh, just keep and in see. mind that uh, humans can't use heavy anything heavy. Anything is denoted mm -hmm. with that moniker. The humans can't carry, so you just re-roll if you got one of those entries. Yep. Um, and once you have all of that done, uh, jump go. right into it. Go go be in a Viking death squad and and go do some Viking death thing and squatting. Uh, so super simple. Um, obviously, I, I mean, that took us, what, maybe 15 minutes at max? Yeah. And, really even, come up and with even with, yeah, even with picking the codes and the debts and the oaths. I already have a pretty clear indication of kind of how, how my character is going to act, especially the fact that I, and I'm a, one of these crazy pilots uh, that what I would kind of do and how I would kind of act around all the other members. So the fact that I'm not that tough, I'm going to let the immortals kind of take the front and take the brunt of it. But, you know, I'll be able to help them out with uh, a variety of my skills and, and, and uh, abilities. So basically what Steve is telling us is uh, if you're old like myself, uh, He's basically made Howling Mad Murdoch from the A team. And that's who <laughs> Steve's playing. I really feel you should just name this character Murdoch. Uh, because that's that's the character you made. Uh, I highly suggest you go check out the A team if you've never seen it. They made a movie with Liam Neeson. It's oh, not man. terrible. No, it's, I think it's uh, great. Yeah. So as you can see, Steve was totally not influenced by that movie at all. <laughs> Definitely not. So check us out on our Twitch, where we go live on Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And you could probably catch us checking, uh, playing these characters from Viking Death Squad. And we'll see how how long that campaign goes and, and how many of them die in like the first five minutes of getting <laughs> just swarmed by the Borg. Uh, but with all that being said, from myself and Steve and Nothing Ventured, Nothing Game, we love rolling dice giving advice with a little bit of that New York Spice. Say goodnight, Steve. Later. Night.